Varesh, how are you doing? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Okay, good. That's right. That's great. Uh, but you've got a, a question on, on a car that's moving at a constant velocity. Is that right? Yes, it is. And so I'm just going to, when I do a problem like this, uh, I like to just draw some pictures first. And it's not a bad habit to get in. Two, we recognize that we've got a car that's moving and it has a constant velocity. Uh, equal to 120 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Okay. And what else are we told? That the engine has a power, the power of the engine. It's, uh, it's um, 20 kilowatts. Okay. It's 20 kilowatt. Okay. So w as this car is moving at constant velocity along the road at 120 kilometers, we have to find out what is the frictional force. That's the question. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Okay. So, how are we going to do this? Have you got any ideas or are you a bit stuck? Where to start? Um, I really don't know where to start. Tomorrow. Okay. Let's just do a recap and then I'll show you that there is a really nice equation to deal with exactly this type of problem. But we're going to derive the equation uh, or show you how we work it out. Okay. okay. So, the first thing that I'm going to, I'll show you the pitfalls of the question as well as we go through. That's the question. So let's start with what is power? Any idea? What, what is power? How do we define power? Um, it's, um, it's like work done over um, a period of time. Okay. So it's the amount of work or energy used up per unit of time. Yeah. And in terms of our, our SI unit system, watts is used for measuring power. And I just want you to be very careful about this because you'll notice that we've got two W's there. Watts is actually a one watt is equal to one joule per second. And those are the SI units that we need to make sure. So please don't get that W mixed up with that. That W there stands for energy. Okay? Yeah. That is work done. And it's a unit of energy. Okay, work done, uh, work done, which is equal to energy, and it's measured in joule. Okay, yeah. now, can you remember what work done is? How do we break up work done? Um, it's, um, it's a work uh, is equal to force times um, time. No, okay. I mean, uh, a distance, sorry. Okay, you've, you're almost there, and I think you've got it right. It's the force applied to an object as long uh, and the displacement of that object but the force and the displacement must be in the same direction so if i take this object here and i move it across over there across a smooth surface it will be the force that i've applied times the displacement of the of the object so what we would write here is delta x okay, okay? and now if you look at this you'll see that we've got an interesting st scenario here we've got a Thing to point out that we've got delta x divided by time. So what's delta x divided by time? Um, the change in position divided by time. Isn't Dis it uh, v um, velocity? Ah, very good. That's excellent. So now can you see that in fact what we've got, and I just want to change back to the black color, we've got that we can replace that circled bit with velocity. Okay, so now we've got power is equal to force times velocity. Can you see how that's going to help us in solving this problem? Yes, I see. So we've got power, we've got velocity, we just need to find force. But there's a little bit of a trick. This is the force of friction, and we'll come back to that in a minute. So at least we've got a way of finding out what the force is. And I, I hope you can see that it's not too difficult. Yeah, that's so if we write down our new equation, and we say power is equal to force times velocity, we need to make sure we're working in SI units. So we were told that it was 20 kilowatts. We don't know the force at this stage, and we were told it was 120 yeah. kilometers per hour. Now, this unit and this unit both are not in SI units. We have to convert them. 
So how do we convert 20 kilowatts into watts? Um, you see that 120 times, um, times 1,000 by... Uh, now, just are we looking at 20 kilowatts into watts, first of all? What does kilo mean? A thousand. Yes, so we're going to say 20 kilowatts is 20 times 10 to the 3 watts. Are you with that? Yes, I'm with that. And then force... And now we're going to change 120 kilometers per hour into meters per second. second. And I, the, the long way of doing it is to say change kilometers and then change hours. The short way of doing it, you can multiply meters, uh, kilometers uh, by 1,000 to get meters and then divide by hours by dividing by 60 times 60. The short way of doing it is to remember that you just divide by 3,6. Okay, so now we can start to work this out, and the calculator gives us some interesting ideas here. So actually, force is going to be equal to uh, 20 times 10 to the 3 divided by this amount of 120 divided by 3,6. Is that okay? Yes, okay. I haven't made a mistake. You're checking me. I'm checking you. Okay, good. 20 exponent 3, because it's times 10 to the 3, divided by uh, 120, it turns out to be 33,3, uh, divided by 3.6 in brackets, and I get a total force of 600 newtons. Okay? Yes. Now remember, this is the force of the engine pushing the car forward. Okay. Okay. But that wasn't what the question asked. This is forward. This is how the car will be pushed forward. What did the question say? The question, look at it again. It said that we had to find the frictional force. Yeah. So how are we going to do this, Varish? Um, I think the, um, like the net force is um, like 600 newtons. Okay, so what we know is the force applied in the forward direction. Let's just draw a little vector diagram here for a minute. We're going to say the force forward. Sorry, my line isn't terribly straight. This is the force forward, okay, was equal to 600 newtons. Now, the question is, what is the resultant force? Because we have to find the force backwards. We have to find the force of friction. We don't know what that is. Do we have any other information that will help us work out what the resultant force is? Is um, there any clue in constant the question? Velocity. Sorry? Um, constant velocity. Ah, excellent. Well done. So what does constant velocity mean? That there's no acceleration. There's no acceleration, which tells you that the resultant force is equal to zero newtons. So that tells you that this force of friction must be equal in magnitude to the force of the, of the engine pushing forward. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. Varesh? Yes. Okay, so if the force was pushing forward to the right, it would be 600 newtons to the right. The force that's opposing that motion is 600 newtons in the opposite yes. direction. Okay. Yes. I hope you've got that. It's a really nice application of, of Newton's laws and applying all that we've learned so far in terms of mechanics. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Remember to watch out for this formula of uh, F is equal, uh, power is equal to, uh, where did we have it? That power is equal to force times velocity. It, I suspect that, that could be a there could be a question like this either in your prelims or in your final exam. So get familiar with it. And remember the critical thing here was changing to yes. SI units. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. Phone us again. <laughs>